Tayamaki, a former Japanese school teacher. Recently, I cycled across Europe on a single gear bamboo bicycle while making matcha. This video documents the entire journey from Amsterdam, Netherlands to Roma, Italy. Total duration 60 days, total distance 2,629 kilometers. Matcha tea made 96 cups. Which countries did I travel through? What did I see? Who did I meet? And what did I feel as a Japanese person? And why did I decide to embark on this journey in the first place? If you're interested at all, I believe you'll enjoy this adventure. So let's set off together! Starting from the worst. It was a sudden turn of events. After checking out the guest house, I carried my bicycle bags to the bike. I placed two bags next to the bicycle. Knowing that this wasn't Japan, where you should never take your eyes off your bags. But I happened to leave my bags and went back to the guest house for other belongings. When I returned a few minutes later, one of the red bags had already vanished. And this was how I started my journey, even without clean underwear for tomorrow. What a splendid start! What do I do when panicking? Yes, I drink matcha. It's rich in L-theanine, which has a relaxing effect. Come down, Aki. You've got this. Underwear hunting quest. First thing first, I need underwear for tomorrow. I only wear the underwear from Uniqlo. So I tried searching for it. I thought there is no way there is a Uniqlo in Amsterdam. But when I searched on Google Maps, I found it. Bicycle friendly culture. My first impression of the Netherlands is that it's a cycling paradise. The roads are flood and there are bike lanes everywhere. Plus, the bicycles are incredibly stylish, unlike anything I've seen in Japan. But I've noticed one thing. With so many bicycles around, finding parking spaces was quite challenging. Still, the bike lanes were incredibly convenient. Differences at Uniqlo. I arrived at Uniqlo, oh, I saw lots of the same products as in Japan, which made me so happy. Mostly the same, but with some differences. For example, the colors. I couldn't find that red ultra light down jacket that's popular in Japan, in the Netherlands or Germany. And sizes, like this hoodie, that's an M in Japan, is an XS in the Netherlands. I seem like a shorty. So this is everything I bought today. By the way, in the evening I was shocked to discover that the stolen credit card had already been used for a purchase of 100,000 yen by someone. Well, I can't do much about it. It's been a long day. Peacefulness from a cup of tea. In the tea ceremony, there is a concept of peacefulness from a cup of tea. The world right now is filled with instability due to things like wars, and I believe many people carry anxiety. So through matcha, I wanted to bring a little love and inner peace. And that's one of the big reasons why I choose to embark on this journey. Today I held my first tea gathering of the trip. The participants were one person and one bird. The next day, four people joined. I'd be happy their hearts could find some peace even if just during this time. Minimalist houses. While I was in Amsterdam, I stayed at a follower's house, and I really wanted to introduce you to this place. Look at this! Such an incredibly minimal and beautiful house, right? Surprisingly, he used to be a monk. We had matcha together and practiced meditation. I had a really good time. After enjoying Amsterdam fully with waffles, a boat tour, and even visiting a police station, I headed to the next city, Leiden. Look at all these cute houses, animals I've never seen, windmills. I'm in love with these sceneries, so different from the rural views of Japan. High-level Japanese market. Okay, let's go take a look at the Japanese market in Leiden today. Wow, there's so many people. 
Lots of small shops too. Hmm. What they are selling? Are those sashimi? No, they are not. <laughs> they are selling various things from stationery, fresh flowers, Yu-Gi-Oh cards, matcha, kimonos, pottery, swords, two school bags. Oh wow! They even have shiokoji, a secret Japanese food recipe. I've never seen such high-quality Japanese goods at an overseas market. The Netherlands is fascinating. By the way, I secretly hosted a small tea gathering here. After the market, I moved to The Hague and stayed at another follower's house. Then I witnessed a surprising sight there. Simple tatami house. Taking off my shoes and entering the room, I saw tatami. I've never expected to see tatami in the Netherlands, so I was a big surprise. The reason I like tatami is its versatility. It would be a perfect mattress for kids, and we can all sit down to eat on it. And with futons, we can even do pillow fighting. Just kidding. If you put down futons, you can sleep on the tatami. Tatami is amazing, isn't it? Morning routine. Today, I jumped into the freezing cold sea in the morning. Apparently, this is something he occasionally does as a part of his morning routine. Honestly, it was incredibly cold, but it was really refreshing. If you have your specific morning routine, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. After this, we all enjoyed the mate tea together. The warm tea seeped into our chilled bodies. That was amazing. Miraculous birthday. Today, we headed to the beach to catch the sunset. The sun was setting fast. Hurry, hurry! We made it! The sunset was breathtakingly beautiful. As it turns out, it was my birthday, so we had cake and celebrate together. What's the miracle, you ask? A woman happened to be passing by, and it was her birthday too. Wow! Moreover, we had just a piece left for one more person, so we could give it to her. Such coincidence do happen. Thanks for the best birthday. The next day, after sipping heartfelt matte tea, I set up for the ferry terminal. Next stop, the ferry to the UK. UK. I arrived in the town called Harwich, my first time in the UK. It was a relief to find out that they drive on the left side, just like in Japan. 130 kilometers. The next day, at 7 o'clock in the morning, I set out. The plan was to reach London today. According to the Google Maps, it was 81 kilometers. I thought I had plenty of time. Pedaling through the first sights of the UK, I was amazed. But something felt off. I've been cycling for a while, yet the map cursor wasn't moving much. There's still 65 kilometers left. How come? Hmm? What is am I? Dang it! It's miles! Without realizing it, Google Maps had switched to miles. So there were 104 kilometers left. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay. Anyway, yeah, I decided to push on as far as I could. I reached the town of Kelmsford after tackling some hilly roads. I got too hungry, so I destroyed a massive kebab. Pushing on from there, I finally arrived at today's accommodation. A crazy 130 kilometers in a day. I was totally exhausted. Unfortunately, Airbnb cancelled on me today. But fortunately, one of my followers kindly offered me a house. A big thank you. Ever heard of Japan House? Today was the day for the tea ceremony in London, so I went to the shop called Japan House to find wagashi, Japanese sweets. I stumbled upon it, and the moment I entered, I fell in love. The place had the atmosphere of the sophisticated Japanese tea room, and it was filled with high-quality Japanese items. Oh, those sake cups by Nosaku! And my beloved matcha! Just between us, I was ecstatic on my own, even before the tea ceremony. Tea gathering for 15. Afterward, I prepared for a tea gathering in Hyde Park. Initially, there were only three attendees, but more and more people joined, eventually reaching 15. I was so happy to see so many. However, I've never made so much matcha in a single day in my life, so it was honestly quite a challenge. Still, everyone was so kind that we had a great tea gathering. 
By the way, the matcha I used was Hizo Denlai, my first favorite brand. First flat tire. The next day, while enjoying a pleasant bike ride, I got a flat tire. I was using Schwalb, sturdy tires, but even Schwalb seemed no match for this needle. Today, I'll continue to tour the camping ground. Camping turned glamping. This is my tent. No, just kidding, it's too big to bring. What happened was the place I thought was a campground turned out to be a glamping site. When I explained the situation to the owner, they said, you can stay for free. Wow, really? The world is full of generous people. Thank you. The next day, my breakfast was miso soup and eggs. Wow, miso soup after a long time is so delicious. Now, I'm heading to Dover today to catch the ferry. Google Maps Trap. If I were to give just one piece of advice to anyone considering a bike trip in the future, it would be this. Don't rely too heavily on Google Maps. Because like me, you might find yourself cycling through a wheat field without even realizing it. Where am I? Of course, I usually love Google Maps. I mean it, Google Maps. Okay, anyway, I made it to Dover. I managed to catch the ferry on time. I'm exhausted, so I'll rest on the ferry. Good night. France. I arrived in Calais, France. From here, I'm passing through Cassel and heading to Cotric. Unexpected situation. As I was cycling on this day, I started hearing a rattling sound. Could it be... Yeah, a spoke had broken. Since I couldn't fix the spokes myself, I needed to find a repair shop. Today I stayed at a lovely Airbnb in Cassel. I'll set off towards Belgium tomorrow. Belgium. I have traveled to various countries before, but crossing borders by bicycle was a first for me. So I was wondering what would happen. Nothing happened. There was nothing. Well, in reality, nothing really happened. It was like crossing from one Japanese prefecture to another. So this is the EU. Impressive. The law of success. Since the spoke broke in France, I had been searching for a repair shop. The first two didn't work. On the third try, I finally found a bike shop that could fix it. And they even had spare spokes. Yeah, there's a saying, all's well that ends well. No matter how many setbacks there are, if the ending is good, it's a success. Attack of the White Fluff While cycling in Belgium, I noticed something peculiar. I was being attacked by fluffy white things. What are these? Dandelions, maybe? Someone please find me the answer. I arrived in Coltrake and stayed at Airbnb. The owner recommended some delicious Belgian beers. For us Japanese, Belgian beers are easy to drink and tasty. I'll cycle towards Ghent tomorrow. A world of Hogwarts. I arrived in the city of Ghent. What is that? It's like Hogwarts from Harry Potter. Speaking of Harry Potter, wearing a kimono coat with a scarf makes you look like Harry Potter. But who cares? <laughs> anyway, it was truly a beautiful city. Living on the boat. Today, for the first time in my life, I stayed in an Airbnb on the boat. The room looks like this. It had electricity and a shower, but no washing machine. So I washed and dried my clothes myself. It didn't rock much, surprisingly comfortable. More than anything, it felt like a secret base. So exciting. Okay, good night. Tomorrow, I'll head to Brussels. Mannequin piss. The first thing I saw in Brussels was the mannequin piss. I had high expectations, but wait, it's smaller than I thought. Yeah. Japan also has the Shonben Kozo in the Ia Valley, so definitely check it out. <laughs> Interesting siren sounds. While riding, I heard the siren of an ambulance, like this. I think this sound is quite interesting for Japanese people because it's similar to the sound effects of a ghost appearing, like this. By the way, this is what an ambulance sounds like in Japan. What it's like in your country? Kind-hearted people of Belgium. 
Today I stayed at a follower's house in Brussels. They treated me to delicious meals and offered numerous local experiences. What's more, a few days later, I even stayed at her mother's house. They were so kind. A friends I met at the tea gathering the next day were all incredibly kind too. I was moved by how open-hearted Belgians are. A little lost in the mountains. Today, I was cycling on the usual paved road. Gradually, the slope became steeper, and I found myself on the mountain path. I started feeling a bit anxious. Ah, I lost. But still, I kept going until the road disappeared. <laughs> hey, Google Maps, where's the road? As I went further, I found a road and a house. Good God, I was so relieved. But then, as I followed that road, it led to a dead end. When I was thinking maybe I'll camp here tonight, in the middle of nowhere, I happened to spot a person. How sweet! In the end, that person guided me to a major road. I was so thankful. After that, it was all downhill to the guest house. Thank you! Luxembourg. The next day, I entered Luxembourg, aiming to reach Wilt. Luxembourg is a relatively unfamiliar country for Japanese people. What could it be like? First impression. My first thought upon entering Luxembourg was beautiful. First, the stunning mountains greeted me. The houses are unified in soft colors, making them very stylish. Most surprising was the absence of litter. I instantly fell in love with this country. Trash bins. Upon arriving in Luxembourg city, I explored various places. I saw some beautiful cityscapes, charming buses, mysterious red bags, etc. While many things surprised me, this was the most shocking. What are these black baskets? Oh, uh, tra tra trash bins. While I agree with having trash bins, aren't there too many? In Japan, there aren't many trash bins in parks or street, so I wished we could share some. Free trains and buses. Another surprise was that buses and trains are all free. Moreover, their designs are so cute, making me want to ride them every day. Multilingual. I also held a tea gathering in Luxembourg. What I noticed there was that many Luxembourg's residents are multilingual. Dutch, French, German, English, and more. Most Japanese can only speak Japanese, so being able to speak three or more languages is beyond amazing. It's a miracle, I would say. In Luxembourg, I had many different experiences. I'd like to share more, but there's no end to it. So let's move on. France. Back in France, riding through vast vineyards, I continue to make progress. Headed from Metz to Strasbourg, I stayed at the lovely home of a follower couple along the way. Traveling can be tough, but encounters like this make me want to keep going. Alright, let's ride from Strasbourg to Colmar. World of Hell. Admiring the beautiful towns and vineyards of France, I arrived in Colmar. Actually, this place served as the impression for Hell's Moving Castle in Studio Ghibli films. Wow, it's incredibly beautiful. It looks like a town where hell could fly. Japan isn't just Tokyo, and France isn't just Paris. There are so many more stunning cities in the world. Well, tomorrow, I'm heading to my beloved country, Switzerland. Switzerland, woohoo! I've safely entered Switzerland. I stayed in Basel for a night and will head towards Alton. Swiss countryside for Japanese. The Swiss countryside feels incredibly beautiful to the Japanese, as it's more open compared to rural Japan. But both countries share the challenge of steep slopes. Japanese small habit. Many Japanese clean their room a bit and then check out when staying in accommodations. This is because Japanese people cultivate the habit of cleaning up after using a space. While not only Japanese do this, it might be considered a Japanese habit. Traveling with someone. In Switzerland, I often traveled with someone. Solo travel is great, but having someone along makes the journey even more enjoyable. My belief. During this journey, someone advised me 
it's dangerous to share your location online, or you shouldn't stay at strangers' houses. Certainly, I had same concerns. However, I wanted to believe in my followers. And fortunately, everyone I met turned out to be genuinely kind-hearted, which made me truly happy. Being lucky, riding from Altdorf in the rain towards today's accommodation. Among 60 days riding, this was the only day it rained heavily. Amazing, isn't it? I really feel lucky all the time. That, I think, is the secret to being lucky. Day 1 of Alps Climb Finally today, I will start climbing the Alps. Though my legs have been trained throughout the journey, I'm still worried. The road was flat for the while, then suddenly uphill. Cars pass effortlessly, but I pedal with all my energy. After two hours, my legs ache. Occasionally stretching, I keep climbing. When it gets tough, the gift from my followers gives me power. I think I can keep going. After four hours on this road, I finally reached Andermatt. Daily yoga and stretches are a must. Day 2 of Alps Climb Good morning! I had some bread for breakfast, fueled up, so let's aim for the top of the mountain. Climbing, climbing, and more climbing. I took some photos and climbed some more. Oh my gosh, the muscle soreness is killing me. Oh, the view is opening up. Just a bit more. Give my old pedaling the bike with my last strength. Finally, I've reached the top of the mountain. 2,106 meter. I made it. So happy. Actually, I was anxious if I could complete this mission. So as soon as I reached the goal, my energy drained out. As a reward to myself, I prepared matcha in this breathtaking view. Reminds me of making matcha at the Grand Canyon. Furious Descent I spent some time at the top of the mountain, then headed downhill. Mmm, what's this? The longest and steepest downhill I've ever seen in my life. Descending and still descending. It just keeps going. The best roller coaster I've ever experienced. I stayed in a roller for the night, and the downhill continued the next day. Today, I got nearly 100 kilometers closer to Agno. First tent. Today, for the first time on this journey, I used a tent, finally. My beloved mobile tent. Well then, good night. Heaven. The next day, I decided to stop by Lugano in the morning. Honestly, I didn't know about Lugano, but it turned out to be an incredibly beautiful place. Is this heaven? Later, I learned that this place is known as the gateway to heaven. Yeah, it truly felt like heaven. Italy. Finally, I entered Italy, the last country of my journey. I'm so excited. I stayed in Como for a night, aiming for Milan through rough mountain roads. Sightseeing in Milan. After arriving in Milan, I decided to do some sightseeing. Everything is new for me, so I'm too excited. Arrived at Duomo station and walked above ground. Wow, suddenly the Grand Cathedral appeared in front of me. Truly breathtaking. Everything in this city looks gorgeous. I won't buy anything, but just looking at them was enjoyable enough. Italians. Next day, I had a tea party in Milan. By having organized tea parties in different countries, I've noticed something. That is, the overall character of people varies by country, even in Europe. For instance, in general, the Dutch are open and kind, Swiss are peaceful and smart, and Italians, they give the impression of being cheerful and friendly. Thanks to that, the following party was a lot of fun too. By the way, here's my reaction when I first had margarita pizza in Italy. It's good! Aww. Yeah! Enjoying the journey. Took a train today and arrived in Venezia. I've changed into a kimono. Let's have some fun! Wow, this is Venezia! The city of water! But it was too hot! <laughs> Let me introduce one way I enjoy my travels. It's to travel without researching much in advance. Instead of meticulously planning like many Japanese do, I let my intuition guide my actions. 
because intuition helps discover what I truly want to do. Even in Venezia, I followed my heart and had a truly enjoyable journey. Following intuition can lead to unexpectedly finding delicious restaurants too. Afterward, I returned to Milan, passed through Piacenza, Parma, spent a few days with a wonderful follower in Reggio Emilia, and I'll be crossing mountains next, heading for Pisa. Miracle Water After climbing the Alps at 2,000 meters in Switzerland, I thought 10,000 meters would be easy. However, it wasn't easy at all, with the intense sunlight and steep slopes. I quickly ran out of drinking water. When I felt absolutely hopeless, I found a bar ahead. The water I drank there was tastier than any water I had ever had. Ideal simple room. The accommodation I stayed at today was very simple and lovely. A room with a wooden base, exactly the room I idealize. God always prepares gifts beyond challenges. Falling. Later, I stayed in Massa and aimed for Pisa. On the way, I fell spectacularly. The front wheel dropped from a road bump. Look at this miserable front basket. It's so smashed and pitiable. Well, at least I didn't get run over by a truck. Phew! In Pisa and Firenze, I visited the typical tourist sites. Then I stayed overnight at the camping site in Certaldo and headed to Siena. Siena. Honestly, I didn't know about the city of Siena, so I was so shocked when I arrived in the city. There are many historical buildings, and personally, I really like it. I should tell more Japanese people about this city. What did I bring? Now, let me briefly introduce what I brought on this journey. Honestly, I think this is still a lot. Next time, I want to go even more minimal. I've been still advancing from Siena toward Roma today. Surgery. Yes, surgery. But it's not me. The front basket that got bent in an accident finally broke due to the weight of the luggage. Oh no, this could be serious. I used some tape from the first aid kit. I had to do some makeshift repairs. I never thought I'd use a first aid kit for my bicycle. While experiencing various things, I was steadily getting closer to Roma, even if slowly. Hayao Miyazaki Today I stayed in Calcutta, a town perched on the cliff. It was incredibly mystical. Upon researching, I discovered it's the model for Lapita from Castle in the Sky. Miyazaki himself has also visited here. I didn't know that. Labyrinthine alleys, sudden green forest, truly a Lapita like world. Amazing. Goal. Today marks the final day of the journey. I headed from Calcutta to Roma. Despite a bad migraine, I pushed through on the last day, pedaling and walking the bike. And finally, I've reached Roma. Yeah! I've changed into a kimono at the hotel, headed to the goal, the Piazza di Spagna. Any followers here? I had a nervous excitement. Hmm. 
Oh, they're there! Some followers were waiting for me! Thank you! I finally completed the 2629 kilometers ride. Yeah, I did it! Shout the joy, we took commemorative photos together. After that, I had a final tea gathering and party with them, marking the end of this journey. I was truly grateful to everyone who joined along the way. Thank you so much. Final thoughts, people. So I've safely made it back to Japan. Yay! So there's something I want to say as a final message for this journey. Throughout this trip, many friends said to me, Thank you for coming all the way to Europe. Thank you for making delicious matcha. Thank you for creating wonderful videos. I was really glad to hear that. But in fact, it's the opposite. I want to say thank you. Because of everyone's support, I could reach the goal of this journey. Because all of you are here, I feel inspired to create videos like this. The kanji for people is written as hito, composed of two strokes. By removing each stroke, makes it fall apart, right? So that means people support each other all the time, living together. So always, thank you. So stay safe, have fun, and thank you for watching. As usual, I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye.